The other day we were busy talking about some of the coming leaked content for Modern Warfare 2 Season 4, but lost in it was the official information coming from Infinity Ward, who made a big announcement, and depending on who you ask, uh, maybe not so great one. Today we're going to be running down this new announcement and the coming refresh for Modern Warfare 2. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below on what you think of this announcement and the coming reset. Like it, dislike it, impartial, whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay there with all things Season 4, Modern Warfare 2, and anything COD related, as well as other FPS. PS content I'd love to have in the community. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market, but more on them a little later. For now, let's take a look at what we learned is coming to Season 4 from Modern Warfare 2 from Infinity Ward themselves. So amidst the leaks for Vondel this past week, I'd honestly be curious to know if this was given to us officially to try and cover up those leaks because the announcement we're touching on here today came just a few hours on the dot here on the turn of the hour after that Vondel leak happened. But we learned from Infinity Ward some of the fate of DMZ in the upcoming Season 4 update. Now, DMZ recently has had some pretty cool updates. Season 3 Reloaded introduced Koshi Complex, a new Easter egg, new features, and then we had a lot of almost overhaul-worthy stuff for Season 3's launch. Bartering, new vests, new factions, and all. I've been saying it, I'm kind of surprised that DMZ is kind of getting the most of the substantial updates of this game that we've seen to date, but that's a different story for a different day. In a tweet thread, Infinity Ward confirmed the following. There are many exciting additions coming to DMZ in Season 4. Updates will include a refresh and reset like that of Season 2 in order to make room for new mission sets and the new upgrade redacted. Faction mission progress will be reset in lieu of the new ability to earn faction classified. Contraband keys and mission inventories will be emptied. Insured weapon slots will be reset as we introduce new ways to unlock them. Earned rewards such as blueprints, skins, and calling cards will not be affected. Stay tuned for all the intel on season four of DMZ in an upcoming blog post. So firstly, the big thing out of this is yes, a refresh is happening. This one is kind of surprising to me to be honest granted it's now been two seasons since our last rather than the one that we saw from the changeover from season one and in the introduction of dmz to season two in a reset it's still so strange to me that we're seeing one for what seemed like by the tone of messaging it didn't seem like infinity ward was really keen on doing this again for the foreseeable future but we are seeing a reset here now fully confirmed. But what that means is you'll end up losing your challenge progress. All of that will be wiped, assumingly introducing and making way for new challenges throughout DMZ across all the factions. You lose all your contraband weapons, all your keys and saved items. And that one that's most upsetting to players is the resetting of insured weapon slots. Now, this is the part that really doesn't make sense to me since with season one to the season two reset, it was done in order to make insured weapon slots easier to obtain, to lessen the scaling of difficulty of challenges to obtain those weapons and slots and items they were integral to the base of the gameplay experience a little easier not the extraction portion so with the initial wipe to me it kind of made sense you were changing the fundamental ways of how players were able to obtain more insured weapon slots but this time around it kind of seems like it's just a standard wipe no fundamental reasoning included this time around i feel like big picture long-term stuff it's still yet to be understood but let's just say theoretically there's a chance that dmz isn't supported post modern warfare 2 and into 2023 2024 if that's the case then season four and five likely won't see another wipe after that so what harm would it do to just add another set of insured weapon slots as like a fourth or fifth insured weapon slot via those new ways previewed instead of just resetting everything it's very much a matter of the hardcore versus casual player base i'd say because i get it if you got those three insured weapon slots right after the initial wipe in season two's launch you might be bored and looking for something to do but oppositely you could be just finishing up your third weapon slot after like two seasons and now finding out that it's all for air quote nothing really i mean that's kind of what i did with dmz as a whole after season one i was just about done with all of my tier missions and then having it all wiped, I was like, well, I don't really feel like doing that again, so I didn't. I imagine that would be the same effect for a lot of people, but perhaps that's just me. Anyways, one thing that I'm a little worried about is the mentioned new ways to unlock insured weapon slots. Now, this could be just me totally going worst case scenario, and it very well could be something that comes through gameplay and additional avenues there, but I'd be lying if I said in the back of my mind I wasn't expecting this to be a bundle coming in the future, selling that bonus of another insured weapon slot like we've seen with UAVs, self-revives, initial cooldowns on the insured weapons for specific blueprints. We touched on it briefly, and we'll expand upon it here in a coming video at some point but the future of dmz the issue that the mode faces when you consider the possibility of it returning for further support is that what's the roi or return on investment here for developing this game mode 
Before the bonuses were introduced to bundles, you had a ton of development going into a mode where realistically, it was surprisingly untouched by monetization. Warzone is arguably the same way where it relies heavily on cosmetic sales since it is free to play, but that's proven effective in the past just based off of earning reports. But DMZ is kind of like a side mode of that. So like think of like the zombies mode or something like that to a premium launch. It's a niche community with varied levels of replayability, but we've arguably gotten more content than comparable zombies or side mode would comparatively to what Warzone would be as that premium launch. DMZ has had a ton of stuff introduced. I mean, in three seasons, we've had Koshi Complex and Building 21 exclusively built for DMZ. We have the shared worlds of Ashika Island and Al Mazra, rumored soon to be Vondel thrown in the mix as well. But almost all of that was rather untouched by monetization, where that scaling is likely much smaller than Warzone because the player base is probably much smaller than Warzone, where the cosmetic transfer of the revenues to that probably nowhere near what we anticipate by comparison to, again, the big free-to-play Goliath of Battle Royale. So with them adding things in like bonuses, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little worried that that's just that slippery slope that starts to now selling perhaps insured weapon slots in Season 4 and beyond. But enough doom and gloom. What is nice is that, of course, your rewards like blueprints, skins, Easter egg items, calling cards, all that stuff will not be reset. But with new challenges, and missions, I would imagine that we also end up seeing a refresh in new rewards to be available post season four. So if you're interested in the DMZ rewards for the faction story mission completion rewards, make sure you end up grabbing those completing certain tiers before the reset ends up happening. Beyond that, the new confirmation of upgrades and faction, some things are interesting to me. There is a lot that could be open-ended and a lot that's left to the imagination, but surprisingly, in terms of new leaks, I really don't think that I've seen a whole ton that could match up with this. The one thing that could though is faction reputation. That's something that was leaked back in, I want to say, early March, but nothing has come of it yet, and nothing really has been expanded upon that beyond that. However, the mention of the new ability to earn faction classified kind of seems like it could be going that way. Previously, it was leaked that we'd end up seeing this be represented in the way of AI characters around the map at faction sites that would offer barter contracts, kind of like little side quests that would allow players to build up reputation within certain factions. So White Lotus, Legion, Black Mouse, Crown, and Classified. This would then also be further seen in buy stations that could potentially have varied levels of price points for equipment and rewards based off the player's reputation level at that time. So perhaps you're like in crown territory, but you have a white lotus good reputation, not necessarily with crown though. So crown could upcharge say a UAV or something like that, as opposed to white lotus perhaps bringing it down. So that's something that would be interesting to see how that would all work out. Certainly interesting possibilities there. And I think that it would make for some awesome replayability and new quest lines, especially if you end up getting new rewards on top of that for those barter contracts, as opposed to just reputation. But anyways, we'll see where that goes. Now, the upgrade redacted, there's truly no information on that currently. Your guess is as good as mine. But then beyond that, we also know that we'll have a season four blog upcoming here. That likely gonna be happening at some point during next week here, the one week out mark from season four. And that launches when we normally start to see stuff given to us in a sort of marketing perspective. So would expect that maybe at the earliest as of next Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday rather, or perhaps something that's dropped a little closer to the season four launch, like maybe on Monday the 12th or Tuesday the 13th. But for now, that's where we're at here at this. Infinity Ward previewed a decent bit of what is upcoming to DMZ, obviously not nearly a whole ton of the full offering, but giving us the basic heads up here on that kind of stuff. So that said, that's what we're going to call it. But before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market. I've said it time and time again, I've worked with the team now for over two years, and I think they've been probably the most beneficial partner to my daily productivity that I've had in that time. Working at a desk, sitting there, looking at a monitor for eight to 10 hours a day, definitely something to start to feel that eye fatigue and strain. So if you guys would like to learn more about Gamer Advantage, the clinical studies, the science behind the lenses, all that kind of stuff, head on over to link in the description below. But if you guys want to pick up the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames on the market. Make sure you use code ESPRESSO to get 10% off your entire order. But that said, that is now what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to DMZ season four? Are you looking forward to a reset, a wipe, or maybe not so much? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay there with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and season four content here as we gear up for all of that. So I'd love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.